Hi, my name's Dave. I live in Atlanta, and I've been a Republican voter for over 30 years. Since my first vote back in the 80s, which I was proud to, my vote has been predominantly Republican, if not 95 to 100 percent. My issue is with this current president that our Constitution starts off by saying we the people, not I the president. What I mean by that is over the past three and a half years, I've seen what he has done to go against our core beliefs as conservatives. He is centralizing power in the office of the presidency. And as a precedent, I cannot handle that. It's clear to me that all he is interested in doing is holding the office of president for either personal gain or some sort of status. He is supposed to be a servant of the people, but yet all in all, he wants the people to serve him and only hear his doctrine. We are not that as a nation. We are a collection of ideas. We may disagree, but we do civilly. We don't do it by baiting each other. One of the most famous relationships that I ever remember reading about or hearing about, which was a, I was astonished, was Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Antonio Scalia. I think that's the model of what we should be as Americans. Wholeheartedly disagree. But what a friendship and, and coming together of ideas to understand each other, not drive each other apart. As the pan pandemic started, I started to watch news all the time. And, you know, I've heard from my wife that I shouldn't be doing it, but it's really galvanized my thinking on this. At every turn, it was not about me as an American getting sick or getting hurt or being financially ruined because of this. It was about him. Every single time, every single interview, every single um, press conference, uh, uh, task force update. It was about him. It still is. The straw that really broke the camel's back was the clearing out of Lafayette Square. That was such a propaganda move. A move I had never thought I'd see as an American as a constitutionalist, as a free thinker, I never thought I'd see the President of the United States tear gas his own people, chemical agent, whatever you want to call it, for political gain. That was an atrocity. I'm going to do the same thing I did on Facebook the next day. I'm going to apologize to whoever my vote in 2016 hurt and quite frankly, killed. With this president's inaction on several topics, he, he's cost American lives. He's cost the fundamental nature of what we believe in to be eroded in the presidency and in the constitution. And most of my Republicans, my re re Republican um, fellows aren't seeing it. The precedents that he is setting throughout this entire time is troubling on what other presidents can do because of what he's stretching to mean or what he's stretching the, his position to mean. I'm appalled at my decision in 2016. I'm appalled at three and a half years of, my, of me going, you know what, the economy's doing great. You know, he's, he's, he tweets a lot. No, I'm mad at myself and I apologize but I will not let that happen again. I hope more, more of my Republican brothers and sisters really look at it and say, this is not constitutional. The reason why I'm vote, voting, voting for Biden right now is not because I believe in his ideals. No, far from it. But at the very least, I think he will uphold the Constitution of the United States, which I do not believe Mr. Trump will or has.